All right, hello again. Okay, this week is about the Great Tribulation. Um, I could spend a lot of time on this topic. I mean, I could do videos for a week on this topic. But I'm just trying to give a, a, an overview and maybe just some grounding in, in what it's about and what it is and what it isn't. Um, they also will refer refer to it as the time of Jacob's trouble. So I'm going to explain a bit about that too. So to begin with, we're going to look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 25. And that's a, a principle in the scriptures that applies even until today. So let's take a look at that first. During the time of uh, Jeremiah prophesying, this was the state of the kingdom. He was in Jerusalem, and the kingdom of Judah was the only thing not absorbed yet by the Assyrian Empire. This green here is the Assyrian Empire. The dark green was the old Assyrian Empire before it was expanded in this 7th century, and it began to expand and take over all of these other kingdoms and took over Egypt even and all around Judah but it never took Judah and uh, the uh, Syrian Empire was there was a rev revolt in starting in Babylon Babylon so the, the capital of Assyria is Nineveh up here and the Babylonians and Assyrians had always been somewhat, sometimes they take over each other when they were smaller empires. And now the Assyrian Empire was this great, huge empire, but there was a revolt in Babylon where the king of Babylon defeated the king of Assyria, and, it, and this became the Babylonian Empire. And then the Babylonian Empire took over Judah and took the Jews into captivity. And uh, brought them up as slaves all through this area and in Babylon itself. So this is the time of Jeremiah. When Jeremiah is here, it's the Assyrian Empire has taken everything. And he's prophesying in Jerusalem that Judah will also be taken. So we're going to use this map for a while. Just uh, Even though it's a map of Assyrian Empire... The Babylonian, Babylonian Empire was basically the same size because they just took over the empire. And also the Persian Empire, when it came later, it was bigger, but it took over all this plus its own kingdoms that were up here. Okay, first of all, I want to show a precedent that was set during the time of Jeremiah by God. Okay, we'll start in verse 4. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not listened or inclined your ear to hear. And they said, Turn you again now, every one from his evil way and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them or to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet you have not hearkened to me, says the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations around about and will utterly destroy them and make them as an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. So what's happened when Babylon became the the ruler of the empire, these kingdoms, whenever rulerships changed in those days, all the serfdom kingdoms would revolt, or a bunch of them would get together. So uh, 
you know, they, they turned to Egypt. All these little kingdoms around here all sort of ganged up and turned to Egypt for help to revolt against Babylon because they saw a weakness. But Babylon came down and just devastated all of these kingdoms and took over Egypt once again and all that. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the sound of millstones, the light of the candle. See, does this sound familiar? This is like the fall of Babylon in the book of Revelation. He talks this way. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass, when the seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon, and that nation, says the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans, and I will make it perpetual de desolations. So the land of Babylon will be desolated after these other kingdoms, or after it desolates these other kingdoms. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that was written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. So it's like a, a domino effect that the nation that does all this devastation will be punished by another nation that does all this devastation, and that nation will be punished by another nation. Okay? For thus says the Lord God of Israel to me, Take the wine cup of this fury, all this devastation that he's talking about, that's the wine cup of his fury. Okay, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send you to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup at the Lord's hand and I made all the nations drink unto whom the Lord had sent me, to wit, Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, a hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and his servants, and his princes, and all his people, and all the mingled people, and all the kings of the land of Uz, that would be like the uh, s s southern Jordan, um, western Saudi Arabia in the, the desert uh, in that area and all the kings of the land of the Philistines and Ascalon and Azza and Ekron and the remnant of Ashdod Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon these are the kingdoms surrounding Jer Jerusalem or Judah and all the kings of Tyrus, which would be Lebanon, and all the kings of Zidon, the kings of the isles, which are beyond the sea, that would be the Greek kingdoms, Dedan, Tima, Buzz, and all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and the kings of Elam, that's going up uh, Elam, Elam is up in this area here. And all the kings of the Medes, Medes are up in this area here. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I shall send among you. Now you have to understand that all of these kingdoms are gone. Even Egypt. Um, Egypt is still there, and it's still a border and a nation, but it's not the same people as it was in the ancient times. It's all been changed. It's all been... The ancient people have been wiped out. Um, 
the people there now are not the same people. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at your hand to drink, then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, You shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city, which is called by my name, and should you be utterly unpunished? You shall not be unpunished. For I will call a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, says the Lord. Therefore prophesy you against them all these words, and say to them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, and he shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes. Now isn't this interesting? That's from the book of Revelation also, that God is tre treading the winepress of his wrath, right? Against all the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. This is wars, right? And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. And they shall not be lamented, or gathered, or buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Howl, you shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, you principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions are accomplished, and you shall fall like a pleasant vessel. And the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord has spoiled their pasture, and the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He has forsaken his covert as the lion, for their land is desolate, because of the fierceness of the oppressor, and because of his fierce anger. So this is a, a principle in prophecy that was first given here by Jeremiah, I think, that um, whatever happens to Israel, to God's people, will happen to all nations. So this is, this is prophecy. It kind of plays out over and over. And, and these things that have been determined are playing out in all the nations and have been. And there is a final time in the end where it will be a global this will play out on a global scale. And that has already happened, like in World War I and World War II. But that's not really globally. That was only half the globe, or a third of the globe. Um, the, the, um, it never happened in America, in North America or South America. And so there's going to be a final time when it's going to be a global thing. So as we have found out that the, the cup of wrath has been given to all nations. And uh, every nation has gone through this time of tribulation and time of troubles. And some nations have survived it and some have not. The next uh, scripture we want to look up now is Jeremiah chapter 30. And this is the one that has the phrase, the time of Jacob's trouble. So we're going to take a look at that and what that really means. So now this is the one where it talks about Jacob's trouble. Um, Jeremiah chapter 30. And the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken to thee in a book. For lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. 
And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask you now and see whether a man does travail with child. Now this is interesting. You mean they had this issue even in ancient times? Ask and see, can a man have a baby? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth? So this is the judgment coming. And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great, so none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It's a great, great day, right? But he shall be saved out of it, Jacob. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck, and I will burst your bonds, and strangers will, will, shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, who I will raise up to them. So what is this talking about? The nation of Babylon took all of this over, and this became the Babylonian Empire. And Judah was also taken over, and the Jews and the nation of Israel were all taken as slaves and spread into this area and into Babylon. So uh, they were servants, and they were under the rule of Babylon. So he's saying there's going to be a great day of trouble and then his people will return to their own land. Well, what happened was the Medes who lived in this area, the, the Medes lived all in this area. This is a mountainous region. The, the Medes were here, and El, the Elamites were here, and the Persians were up in here. So the Medes and the Elamites and the Persians all got together and they became under one king, Cyrus the Great. And Cyrus the Great invaded Babylon and he took Babylon. And so this, this, was, this, this was a great war in Babylon and in all these areas. So that was the time of Jacob's trouble when they were under the rule of Babylon, and Babylon is attacked. Okay, but Jacob shall be saved out of it. So when the Persian Empire took over, they took all of this. Eventually, they took all of this. And um, then the Persian king, Cyrus, he allowed not only the Jews, but he allowed all of the displaced people See, Babylon used to displace every nation they took over, and they would move them into another land and move those people into another land. And so he displaced everybody, and that was part of their tactic of ruling over kingdoms. Um, he didn't displace Egypt, but it was the, the threat of being displaced that um, caused them to stay under Babylon's rule. So a lot, of, some of these nations were just threatened by that, and and a lot of them, like Judah and Israel, were actually taken. Moab and and Ammon and Damascus, they were all taken into other places, but the the king of Persia, King Cyrus, he announced that he would allow all the people to go back to their homeland. So he did that for many people, and, and the main one was for, for Judah to return and rebuild Jerusalem. So this is the great time of trouble when Persia attacks Babylon, and Judah is in Babylon. And the great time of trouble actually saves Judah and sends them home. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck. 
Babylon's yoke, and I will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, who I raise up to who I will raise up to them. So who's David their king? That's Jesus, because this is long after the time of King David. But this is talk this is a messianic prophecy. They will serve David their king, who I will raise up to them. Therefore fear not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be in quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered thee. Yet I will not make a full end of you. I will correct you in measure, and I will not leave you altogether unpunished. So this is like also true for the Christians. This is how God works, okay? For thus says the Lord, Your bruise is incurable, and your wound is grievous. There is none to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have, have forgotten you. They do not seek you, for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins were increased. Why do you cry for your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your iniquity. Because your sins were increased, I have done these things to you. Therefore all they that devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and you, they that spoil you shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon you I will give for a prey. For I will restore health to you, and I will heal you of your wounds, said the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeks after. Right? It's like Christians. They hate Christians too, right? And they call Christians, uh, you know, it's just a religion that's going to end, and the sooner the better, you know. For thus says the Lord, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few, and I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as a before time, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. So God allows the oppressor to come, and then he punishes the, the oppressor, and that is the time of great trouble. And their, norm, their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach to me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach to me, says the Lord? And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind, and it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return, until he has done it, until he has performed the intents of his heart, in the latter days you shall consider it. So, hopefully that gives us a better understanding here of the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is up here. He's in Babylon in captivity. Okay, here's a map of the Persian Empire, okay? They took over all of this was King Cyrus's kingdom, and he moved in, took Babylon. And then he moved, or actually all of this, and he moved in and took Babylon, boom. 
took all of this, took all of that, took all of that. Down here, took Egypt, Libya. So it was huge, huge empire. And there's Jerusalem. And he allowed the Jews to come back and rebuild Jerusalem. Not, I wouldn't say the Jews. The Jews are the people of Judea. Not the people of Judah, per se. It's the people of Judea. And there are uh, a few, a, actually a few tribes. There's the Levites, Simeon, Benjamin, Judah, and maybe even a few more that are, that are called Jews. And they came and they were just a small tribe here, just very small kingdom. And, and then later on, under the Maccabees, they became much larger again. It took uh, about, uh, what, 600 years before they became that large kingdom again. Okay, now Daniel chapter 12 also talks about the Great Tribulation. So we'll take a quick look at that just for reference purposes. Let's take a look at Daniel chapter 12. This is sort of the, the culmination at the end times. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of your people. Michael means who is like God. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now Daniel is in the kingdom of Persia. When, when, uh, when Persia took over Babylon, right here, Daniel was in Babylon. He was uh, one of the chief um, advisors to the king in Babylon. So when Persia took over Babylon, Daniel became an advisor to the Persian king. And then he was moved over here to Susa. That was uh, sort of the capital of the Persian Empire. Or one of the capitals. Uh, they had a few capitals, but this was one of their central capitals, Susa. Daniel was there when he was receiving this prophecy. So he never went back to... Jerusalem, because he was such a high-ranking official, he couldn't. He didn't have the opportunity. But um, he was given these great prophecies. So there will be this time of trouble at the end, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Okay, so... He's given Daniel a, a more great, greatly expanded version of what has just happened. Because Daniel, he's, he's living at a time where his people are going back to Jerusalem. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So this is... Uh, uh, what happens next will be the second coming of Christ and the resurrection of the dead and the great judgment. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So there's going to be a great awakening also. But, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. M many ru shall run to and fro, like we do. If you watch people today, they're going back and forth, back and forth in their cars. and Knowledge shall be increased, as it is today. And then uh, we'll skip the rest of that. <clears throat> now we're going to take a look at some Christian scriptures. And now, what people don't realize, the, um, the Hebrew prophets were directly sent by God to say, directly say certain things. And so, it's very um, organized. If you look at the prophets and start uh, looking at what they all said, and, it, and it's like they are speaking the words of God. 
and God is giving them these words. And so God has, uh, um, you know, he, he builds on the things that he said before, and he expands on things and changes things as he goes. So that's the way the Hebrew prophets work. But the New Testament doesn't work that way. The New Testament is eyewitness accounts by people who saw Jesus and heard him. And it's eyewitness testimony. And it is also the opinions of people who have received the Holy Spirit of God through Jesus. And, and there was like this, this fresh new sprout from the gospel of Christ. And this fresh new giving of the Holy Spirit, which was a very powerful event. And these people who wrote the New Testament are people who received that. And uh, Paul is the most notable because he was a doctor of the law. He studied the Hebrew prophets um, as like at a university level for his time. And then he received the Holy Spirit. So he had a greater knowledge of the scriptures than most other people did. And so he was able to uh, give the gospel in a very powerful way because of that. But what you must understand is this is not like a prophet, like God saying, tell the people this. It's not like that. It, it's, it's people being inspired and giving their own accounts. And so we're going to see some little differences here and there. And maybe some of the stories, the way people remember it, is slightly different here and there. That's why the Gospels aren't all exactly the same. They don't all line up exactly to each other all the time. Because this is, it's just eyewitness accounts. But they're all giving the same story, basically. Maybe in different order sometimes. Now, the accounts of Jesus talking about the time of the end is amazingly synchronous in the Gospels. They all pretty much give the same story in the same order of what Jesus said. So, uh, that's, that's pretty good that way. But we must understand the difference when you're looking at the New Testament. So, let's take a look at the, the three Gospels first. Uh, there are three Gospels that account for Jesus giving a talk about the end times. And that would be in Mark, Luke, and Matthew. The Gospel of John doesn't really cover that topic. So Mark chapter 13. As he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said to him, See thou these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another shall, that shall not be thrown down. He's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So, okay, there's going to be a great deception coming. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. So there's going to be great wars. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, which there are. And there shall be famines and troubles. Yep, there's famines. There's Ethiopia. Um, there's always famines happening. These are the beginnings of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, 
and for a testimony against them. So that happened with the apostles. It also happened uh, with the Christians in Roman times, all the way up into the Middle Ages, during the Middle Ages, after the Middle Ages. It still happens in some parts of the world today. Uh, like in Saudi Arabia, you are not allowed to preach the gospel. In China, there's no way you're not allowed to preach the gospel in China. Uh, there's a lot of places, some parts of India, they, you'll, you'll have the uh, authorities down on your neck if you preach the gospel. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought what you shall speak, neither premeditate, but whatever shall be given to you in that hour, that you will speak. For it is not you that speaks, but the Holy Ghost. Now brother shall be betray the brother to death, father and son and children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Everyone's going to be turning each other in. And this happened under communism in World War II. And that was only uh, a taste of what's going to come. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So, um, so much for being taken out of here and not having to suffer. But when, you, but when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that reads understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into his house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house, and let him that is in the field turn not back again to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray you that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. So that's the great tribulation. And except the Lord shorten those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. And then if any man will say to you, Lo, here is the Christ, or he is there, believe them not. For false Christs and false prophets shall arise, and they shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in the heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he shall send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. So... It's sort of like when Babylon fell, the fall of Babylon. Babylon the Great in Revelation falls. And this is a time of great upheaval and, and um, great tribulation for people because uh, when these kingdoms fall, they're going to blame the Christians and they go after the Christians and the Jews. So um, that the abomination of desolation is, is what, something that the evil ones set up to try to draw everyone away from God. So it takes different forms in different times. But that's what it will be. It will just be something set up to draw everyone away from the truth. And those who do not follow that, will be persecuted. So that's the time of great tribulation. Okay, and then God will punish them for what they did to his people. 
So now he says, okay, learn the parable of the fig tree. When Jesus was coming into um, Jerusalem to face the crucifixion, he came up to a fig, fig tree and he went, said, I'm hungry, and the fig tree had no fruit. And so he cursed the free fig tree and it withered and died right before him, right? And that was a sign, a symbol. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, behold, your kingdom is left to you desolated. So that fig tree is a representation of the kingdom of Jerusalem. And, and that withered and died. It was destroyed by the Romans, okay? So he says here, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is near, even at the doors. So um, that's why people will say, well, the, Jew, the Jewish nation reviving in Israel is like the fig tree putting forth leaves in the springtime. And you know that the summer is near. And when summer comes, then the tree will give fruit. Okay, verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things are done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. That day or hour no man knows, not the angels which are in heaven, or the Son, only the Father knows. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. For the Son of Man is like a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch, therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. So, all, you know, always be prepared. Because if you're not prepared, you're going to have problems. Luke chapter 21. Um, now, there's a woman, okay, we'll just go through this too. He looked up and he saw the rich men cast, casting their gifts into the treasury. In the temple, they had a box for the people would put money in, like sort of like they do at church. And he also saw a certain poor widow casting in two mites, like two cents. And he said, of a truth I say to you, this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all of these have their abundance cast into the offerings of God, but she of her punery has cast, cast in all the living that she had. And as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you are not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and the time draws near. Go not therefore after them. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming, right? Go not after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in various places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs there will be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Be, like, when they bring you up, this is your time to shine. It will be your testimony. Settle it in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, 
which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. And you shall be betrayed by parents, brothers, kinfolk, friends, and some of you they shall cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. See, this is in Babylon, in Babylon the Great. The Christians in Babylon the Great, suffering persecution. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In other words, even though you die, you, you will live forever. In your patience possess you, you your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter. So this is what he's also talking about in other Gospels, as the abomination of desolation. Okay? Um, that the kingdom over his people will be destroyed. Well, Jerusalem became that kingdom over his people when they were persecuting Christians. And that's why Jerusalem was destroyed by Romans. And then Romans persecuted Christians. And the Romans were destroyed by the um, by themselves, really, and, and also by kingdoms around them coming in. And just Roman, Rome became so weak that the surrounding nations just swallowed it up. And then uh, there's uh, the Holy Roman Empire in Europe, you know, uh, they persecuted Christians also. And it just goes on and on like dominoes. But woe to them that are with child and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the gen time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads, for your redemption draws near. And then he spoke a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, you see and know that your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that you, the kingdom of God is near at hand. And verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and so that day comes upon you unaware. For as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man, and in the day time when he is teaching in the temple and at night when he went out and abode in the mount that was called the Mount of Olives and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. Okay, so there's the, another account. When Jesus went out, now Matthew 24. This is the one people tend to like the most for some reason. I guess because it expands a little bit more, maybe. Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See you not all these things? Verily I say to you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, 
when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming of the end of the world? And Jesus said and answered to him, Take heed that no man deceives you. Time of deception. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, time of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So that's, this is talking about the final great tribulation, right? And you shall, and they, and they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all men, for for my name, my name's sake. And then shall many, not hated of all men, hated of all nations, all governments, for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Fathers will parents and brothers will turn each other in. Many false prophets will arise and shall deceive many. And because in now false prophets when you come when you see people walking around saying thus says the Lord and talking as if God has told them to talk this way that to me that kind of shows a false prophet because we're in a time where the prophets have all prophesied and we have the Bible we have computers we have all these things to look at everything that has been said we don't need prophets we need teachers we need um, people to cut through the deception and this is what it's about, right? So these false prophets, thus says the Lord, this is what's going to happen. Jesus is coming in 2024. You know, this stuff. They shall arise and deceive many, because iniquity shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. Where is the love, y'all? Where is the love? But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Well, there goes the people that are going to be out of here by the, you know, raptured out of here. How you endure to the end if you get saved, if you're not raptured out, of, if you're raptured out of here. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, that's our job, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso reads, let him understand. So this is, happens figuratively several times. And at the time of the end there will be something like this. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. So he's telling these people, um, in Judea because they fled to the mountains when Rome surrounded Jerusalem to destroy it okay let him which is on the housetop not come down and take anything out of his house now some say this is to be raptured but he's telling the, them to flee to the mountains neither let him which is in the field return back and take his clothes because you should just flee to the mountains and woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in winter, ne neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. So you can see there's a parody here in the destruction of Jerusalem in the uh, year 70 AD by Rome and in the final second coming of Christ there's a great day of the Lord then there's a great day of the Lord and the destruction of the first temple and the great day of the Lord in the final second coming so there's also the, the tribulations and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. 
but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man say to you, Lo, here is a Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So, who are teaching the elect? If the elect are not, if, if the people are not to listen to these false prophets, false Christs, and everything else, who are the elect learning from? They're learning from the Holy Spirit. They're reading the Bible themselves. They're learning from God. They are living a life of uh, under the stewardship of God and praying for uh, um, understanding of His Word. And they're teaching others, but those others that learn they should also study, start to study, because there's so much deception. When you study yourself, you're going to be able to uh, see through a lot of that deception. So, behold, I told you before, wherefore, if they shall say to you, behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. Oh, there's Jesus down in South America. No, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, lightning doesn't come out of the east and shine to the west. I, the sun does that. So I think it's more about for as the light comes out of the east and shines to the west, so shall the Son of Man be. Right? For, for it will be everywhere in the earth. For whoever, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will be the eagles gathered together. And that's about power, right? That's about um, certain people or entities are in Christianity to be in power. And, and I, I wouldn't say all of them, but um, wherever the carcass is, there will be the eagles gathered Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So this is immediately after the tribulation. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels after the tribulation, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they, the last trump, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know it is near even at the doors. Verily I say to you, this generation shall not pass till all these things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no man knows. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of, that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until that Noah entered the ark, and they knew not the flood until the flood came. So everybody will be like, it's, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain. Look at them, crazy man, building the ark. And that's the way it will be, right up until it rains. And he took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall be two in the field. Okay, this is when the, the second coming. One shall be taken, and the other one left. Two women shall be grinding at their wood mill. One shall be taken, and the other one left. Because he's get, they're gathering the elect. Okay? So it's going to be like, you're going to be seeing, people are going to see this happen. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord comes. 
But know this, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be you also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Feed my sheep, right? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him so doing. Verily I say to you that he shall make him a ruler over all his goods. The thousand year rule of the uh, people of Jesus over the earth. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming. Oh, he's, he's not going to be here for a long time then he shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. That Lord of that servant shall come in a day where he looks not for him, and in an hour he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. So I think he shall make him a hypocrite, because he's divided in his loyalties, right? There shall be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. So now that we've seen that, we'll also take a look at the book of Revelation. Now the Revelation is a bit special because it is a prophecy like the Hebrew prophets. And it was given to John, the apostle. And it is a prophecy. But it's a, it's a very... Um, um, is set up in a certain order that it, it sort of comes around and around and around to the same story. And um, we'll cover that someday. Um, I'm doing some training right now. I, I feel better about it after I'm done the training to start talk, co covering the Revelation in any detail. But we're going to take a look at a few parts of the Revelation that talk about the Great Tribulation in the end times. Now the Great Tribulation is the, the day of the Lord has happened several times already. Like the day that Jerusalem, the first temple was destroyed, that was the great day of the Lord. The day the second temple was destroyed, that was the great day of the Lord. And this final destruction of Babylon near in the end, Babylon the Great, that's also a great day of the Lord. And there was probably a few other great days of the Lord's. Like in medieval times, there was probably something like that. And, and um, maybe at other times. And in other nations, it's because of the cup of reeling brings a great day of the Lord to, in, in different ways to different nations. But we're looking for you know, the great day now is a global day of the Lord. That's what we're looking at now. And that will bring the second coming of Christ. That is the final global destruction. So let's take a look at the Revelation. Okay, this is Revelation chapter 13. And this is a, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the second beast. And I beheld... Now a beast is a kingdom, okay? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. So this comes out of the earth, not the sea. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And I think this is the USA beast, because it comes up out of the earth, so it's like it didn't, it didn't come out of the people, it came out of the earth which is like the discovery of the new world. And he had two horns. So there's like two political parties. And he's like a lamb. He's a Christian nation. But he speaks as a dragon. He starts to speak like a dragon, like, a, like the other beast. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Okay, what's a, like Roman law... Uh, the British bar for lawyers, um, it takes on a lot of the um, attributes of the first beast, okay? 
and he causes the earth and them which dwell on the earth to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So, what is the first beast whose deadly wound was healed? Well, you could take a look at uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Now, their deadly wound was that um, people started reading the Bible and publishing the Bible. And they fought against it a lot. And, and the Roman um, Church almost fell because of that. That's why there's Vatican II. Vatican II was a, a, re, a, a revival attempt up by the Roman Church. And it kind of worked because they started to uh, do the Mass in, in their own language of each country instead of always in Latin. And they um, revived, their, their, you know, revived their doctrines a bit and it helped them to survive. And there's also the uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, that uh, was a, a world dominating power. And how was that healed? Well, after Berlin fell, the Nazis didn't all die. The, um, a lot of their uh, chief officers were taken to the United States and to Russia and some to Argentina. They were, they were fought over because of their knowledge and, and their abilities. Um, the scientists and the doctors, the doctors who have experimented on humans, by the way, and um, they were taken by the Russians and the Americans. So there could be something like that in the, in the intelligence communities that, that was healed and continued on. Um, things like that. So his deadly wound was healed, and he does great wonders, so he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Well, nuclear bombs, right? And, and even just, you know, bombing the shit out of Iraq and Libya and uh, Afghanistan. And, and, you know, they're just, uh, they're good at bombing things. And the whole world watches it on TV, right? And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and lived. The first beast, right? And he had power to give life to the image of the beast. Well, you got Hollywood that can do that, power to the life to the image but I think it's going to be more than that. I think it's AI is, I think, is going to be the final apex of this image of the beast. Um, and this speaking image, this living image, right? And it should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And it causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy or sell. So there's your, your credit cards and your commerce, your digital money. Save he has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him, him that has understanding count the number of the beast. Is the number of a man, his number is 666. So... There's that, okay, that's the image, the mark of the beast. Now the reason I wanted to look at that, to prepare us for this one, Revelation chapter 20. Because <clears throat> we're going to talk about the great tribulation, right? And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So after the thousand years, or what they call the millennium, he'll be loosed out again to deceive the nations. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. 
And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast or his image, and neither had received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So here's the elect, right? But the rest of the dead lived not again. So there's these 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 people these people who stood up against the beast and were killed by the beast and his mark and his image. They are the elect that are raised in the first resurrection, and they are given eternal life to reign a thousand years with Christ. The rest of the dead are resurrected at the end of the thousand years. So this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Because they have eternal life. They're not going to die. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are over, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and there will be the second resurrection. Right? And all the people who did not, were not in the first resurrection will be resurrected in this. And they will have a, a, a chance to stand against Satan again. Because Satan is going to deceive the nations once again. He shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And this is the Gog and Magog war um, described in Ezekiel. To gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. The sand of the sea, that's uh, what Abraham was told. Your children will be as the sand of the sea. Okay, so that concludes our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, hit the like button, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Tell me what you think of it. Um, maybe what you think of certain parts of it. Uh, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.